Well, hey guys, I just made myself some matcha tea and I thought I would sit down and film another Q&A for you all. You seem to really enjoy these where I just answer some random common questions that I get in the comments of my videos. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist. Getting into the questions, number one I've gotten a lot is, can you please talk about oral minoxidil for hair loss? Is it effective? Yes, I can talk about it. And yes, it is effective for a variety of different types of hair loss. Minoxidil is a drug that is a blood pressure medication actually, and is used to treat high blood pressure. It works because it is a potent vasodilator, meaning it makes blood vessels dilate. This drug does have several side effects fluid retention, weight gain. It can cause fluid around your lungs. That's pretty scary. And one side effect that was noted early on is something called hypertrichosis or excess hair growth. That negative, they spun into a positive by turning that into something they could use to treat hair loss. And therein we now have topical minoxidil, Rogaine, you can buy in the store. It works by shortening the length of the shedding phase of the hair, hair cycle and increasing the length of the growing phase, the antigen phase. And the thing about Rogaine, however, or topical minoxidil that you actually put on the skin is those effects are only maintained so long as you use the treatment. Not only that, the medication, it has to get into the um, hair follicle and there has to be a conversion of the medication to its actual active form, minoxidil phosphate. So it requires an enzyme to work on it. It works, but some people don't see very good results. People don't wanna use something every day, understandably, plus it has side effects of dryness, irritation. Because of how it works, when you first start it, you initially experience an increase in hair shedding, and then when you stop using it, you also will experience a temporary increase in hair shedding. So people, you know, they end up bailing on it a lot of the times. So what about taking the pill by mouth? Is that effective? Yes. Where we get worried is, as I mentioned earlier, there are potential side effects. Fluid retention, weight gain, fluid around the lungs. Turns out though, those side effects are what you're gonna encounter if you're taking minoxidil at higher doses used to treat blood pressure, then it becomes more problematic. But what about at low doses? Turns out very low doses of oral minoxidil are effective for hair loss, as effective for hair loss as um, topically, and while those side effects can occur at low doses, they're much less likely. 0.25 milligrams, that actually can get good hair growth in women dealing with female pattern hair loss, androgenetic alopecia. Men need a higher dosage, usually 2.5 to 5 milligrams of minoxidil. Um, they can see benefit at the lower doses, but it doesn't have a statistically significant change in overall thickness or density of the hair. When we're talking about oral minoxidil, you know, there, there is obviously the concern of fluid retention, but in people who are otherwise healthy, it's not a problem. In women, for example, co-administering 0.25 milligrams of minoxidil along with spironolactone, another oral medication for androgenetic alopecia in women, uh, can help reduce the risk of fluid retention because the spironolactone is a diuretic. It helps kind of balance that out. Plus the spironolactone addresses any hormonal component that may be, that may be you know, pushing you over the edge in terms of the pattern hair loss timeline. I have a video, by the way, on spironolactone in women for female pattern hair loss. Now, side effects can still happen, but again, less likely, especially these severe side effects of like fluid around the lungs. I mean, that almost never happens in these low doses used to treat hair loss. But what can still occur is hypertrichosis, excessive hair growth. I mean, that is what you are kind of looking for, but you may not want that all over. So that leads me to question number two. I'm taking oral minoxidil for my hair loss. Can I get laser hair removal? And I'm assuming that you are wanting laser hair removal for the hypertrichosis um, elsewhere on your body, maybe your face, um, or your arms or something like that? And the answer is absolutely yes. You can still get laser hair removal. Um, it still can be effective. The way laser hair removal works is that it delivers energy down into the hair to target the um, bulge region of the hair follicle where the hair follicle stem cells reside. The goal is to heat that area up, causing a rest of growth and ultimately, you push that hair follicle to become miniaturized or to turn into a baby hair. The minoxidil in your body is not gonna make the hair follicle 
not amenable to destruction and targeting from uh, laser hair removal. So yes, to answer your question, you can get laser hair removal to address the hypertrichosis from being on oral minoxidil. Next question, will my hair start to shed when I start oral minoxidil like it would when starting topical minoxidil, AKA Rogaine? And the answer is yes, you will experience a telogen effluvium because the way that minoxidil works is it uh, shortens the shedding phase of the hair cycle and it extends the growing phase of the hair cycle. And in doing so, initially you experience an increase in shedding. It's kind of pushing everybody out so that it can so that everybody can get into the growing phase. And as a result, you have an increase in hair diameter and an increase in hair length. That is what you're going for. With oral minoxidil, you will experience shedding lasting anywhere from three to six weeks. Next question, is oral minoxidil more effective for hair loss in comparison to topical? It certainly can be. Turns out, um, remember I said earlier in the video that in order for minoxidil to work, once it gets into the hair, it has to be converted to minoxidil phosphate. It requires an enzyme to work on it. Interestingly, that may be a reason why minoxidil doesn't work so well for some people in comparison to others, is maybe their hair follicles don't have enough of that enzyme. Turns out with the oral minoxidil, you need less of that enzyme activity to get to to get the minoxidil to the active form to actually work. So in some cases, you could make the argument that yes, it is actually more effective. Um, provided the individual doesn't have side effects, which again, at low doses are rare, um, it's something that is potentially easier to adhere to long-term than the topical stuff, where you've got to spend time putting it on and it's irritating, it makes the hair unmanageable. I mean, if you've ever used topical minoxidil, you know, it can be it can be a pain. So yes, oral minoxidil certainly can be more effective than the topical stuff. I say can be because, I mean, of the reasons that I've outlined, but we don't actually have good randomized control trials looking at oral minoxidil. We do have some studies comparing oral minoxidil to topical, and it does show that they are equally effective, but it doesn't look long-term. And given what I, we know about how people have a difficult time sticking with topical minoxidil, and given what we know about how some people perhaps just don't have the enzyme activity required to get it to its active state, it seems as though for, for some people, we'll say the oral stuff certainly can be more effective. At any rate, it is as effective at, as topical minoxidil. Now, bear in mind, we don't have big studies looking at what the best dose is, and long-term outcomes. So most of what we have is, you know, just personal prescribing practices and small studies in the literature. But a recent large, you know, kind of review of all the research out there, which I'll link the article down below in the description box, did conclude that it is in fact a safe and effective treatment and should be considered more for not only androgenetic alopecia or pattern hair loss, but it's also been shown to be effective for traction alopecia, uh, which I've got a video on by the way, and it's been shown to be effective for something called lichen plano pilaris, and it's been shown to be effective for people dealing with telogen effluvium or the hair shedding. So yeah, uh, to answer your question, it can certainly be uh, more effective than the topical stuff. All right, I think those are the main questions that I've gotten about oral minoxidil. Will laser hair removal damage my skin? It certainly can. I mean, it can have side effects, uh, but it, getting laser hair removal, it doesn't put you at you know, any risks per se. What are the risks of laser hair removal? Well, remember the way laser hair removal works, it's gonna selective, selectively heat up the, um, the part of the hair follicle where the stem cells are and it aims to kind of arrest growth and cause that miniaturization. But one thing that can happen, I mean, because it's heating it up, is you can get heating of neighboring areas of the skin and that can lead to hyperpigmentation. This is particularly a risk for people who have medium to deep skin tones or a skin type that uh, whenever you get a cut, for example, it heals with hyperpigmentation. Another potential adverse effect of getting laser hair removal, which we don't entirely understand why this happens, is paradoxical hypertrichosis in the in neighboring areas being treated. Um, and basically what that means is you get an increase in hair growth. It's like, whoa, it's coming in to get this removed and now I have more hair growth. Why that happens, we don't entirely know. It may have to do with 
um, you know, off target effects of the neighboring skin because it seems to be more likely in people with medium to deeper skin tones. The melanin content in the skin in people who have deeper skin tones, it, it kind of distracts that laser. So they're more at risk for adverse side effects. I already mentioned the hyperpigmentation, but it seems as though this paradoxical hypertrichosis is more common in those individuals. It can then be treated with a laser. So, uh, you know, it's something that we would manage if it happened. Uh, what about using a retinol with an at-home LED device? Is that safe um, to be using tretinoin or retinol or retinaldehyde and be using a at-home LED laser device. You've seen those laser masks like Omnilux is actually a good one. So it's perfectly safe to be using retinoids or retinol or retinaldehyde with those devices. I would suggest not applying retinol or retinoid or retinaldehyde prior to doing the, ma doing the mask, the LED mask or whatever the LED devices that you're using. Um, I would save it for after you have finished the session. Why? Well, depending on the product that you're using or the prescription topical that you're using, some are sensitive to light and they degrade. All right, I have an at-home um, IPL device for hair removal. Should I stop using tretinoin? You wanna stop using tretinoin a few days before using your at-home IPL hair removal device for the same reasons that you would stop using it in advance of getting um, hair removal, laser hair removal or IPL hair removal in a med spa or physician's office because of the risk of hyperpigmentation and more adverse effects. So we do recommend stopping and that would include with the at-home devices as well. Stopping a few days in advance of doing your at-home treatment. This matcha, oh, so good. I've really been on a matcha kick lately. I drink a lot more tea in the like fall, winter months. Over the summer, I drink more herbal tea that's cold, but now I'm getting back into the hot tea game. And I've really been into having turmeric lattes at night has been my jam. Um, and then I've been into having the matcha tea because it, it doesn't really make me jittery like having another cup of coffee would, which I'm always tempted to have more coffee. So this is good. <laughs> Plus it's kind of, I don't know, maybe it's the L-theanine, it kind of has a calming effect. Anyways, I'm rambling. I finished the q and I hope you guys enjoyed it. On the end slate that's coming up, I'm gonna put my um, most recent q and if you wanna watch that one too, you can just click on the thumbnail and I'll take you to the video. But if you like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.